everyone. Today we're starting on the module called Space. In this uh, module we'll be learning about uh, things in space and uh, relativity, which is a theory that Einstein came up with, which means that when things that are moving very fast have their mass or their time measured, it'll be different depending on how fast the observer is moving. Before we get to that though, we need to talk a little bit about space and rockets and gravity and that sort of thing. So let's start off with weight. The first section we'll be learning about the Earth's gravitational field. So uh, what it looks like, how it varies, how it was discovered, and that sort of thing. So everyone knows that objects fall to the ground. You've probably been doing science experiments on this sort of thing since, you know, year seven or something. Uh, but for a long time, people didn't bother trying to figure out why things fell to the ground. It's just something that happened. It wasn't until the 1600s when Galileo and Newton, two famous scientists, tried to describe the motion of falling objects using mathematics. This was part of the scientific revolution of the time. So before the time of Galileo, uh, most people assumed that heavier objects fall faster. A lot of the ideas of science were influenced by uh, Aristotle, and this is how he believed objects fell. He certainly knew that if you dropped a heavy object, it would land harder than a light object. However, Galileo, as pictured over here, showed that all the objects fall at the same rate, regardless of how heavy they are. This rate happens to be 9.81 meters per second squared, which means that every second, its velocity increases by 9.81 meters per second. So this means that if you drop two objects from the same height at the same time, it doesn't matter how heavy they are. They will land at the same time. Uh, Galileo supposedly demonstrated this by dropping two objects of different masses off the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and then noticed that they landed at the same time. So Isaac Newton uh, figured out a way to explain this. He came up with something called gravity, which I'm sure you've heard of him. <laughs> so, uh, he showed that the force on an object uh, is related to his, its acceleration by this equation. Acceleration equals the force applied over the object's mass. And so, he, figured, he, he said to himself, if all objects accelerate at the same rate, then that means that there must be a force on it. But, if the acceleration is going to be the same for all the objects, then the force has to be a multiple of its mass. So that means that the mass will cancel out. Make sense? So he said that the force of gravity equals the mass, m, times some constant. And so if we substitute that into this equation, we can see that this m will cancel out, and that the acceleration due to gravity will be this constant, g. So Newton proposed that uh, the force was caused by an, an invisible field that uh, extended all around Earth that meant that objects in the field had a force applied to them. Uh, the force was pointed toward the center of the Earth. We can see that uh, in this animation over here. All these various objects above the Earth are being pushed toward the center. So what would that mean if uh, you were actually on the Earth? Well it means that you would fall toward the ground. So this uh, invisible force, gravity, takes objects that are inside the Earth's gravitational field and pulls them to the surface of the Earth. And of course its strength, F equals mg, is proportional to the mass of the object, which means that the acceleration will be constant regardless of the mass. As the distance from the Earth increases, the field gets weaker. We can see that the field lines close to the surface are a lot closer together than the field lines that would be, you know, out here or something. That means that as you go further away from the Earth, its gravitational field gets weaker. So objects that are a very, very long distance from the Earth will experience less force. In the equation F equals mg, g will be a much smaller number than it is on the surface. This means that gravitational acceleration uh, is constant near the surface of the Earth. And in fact, no matter where you go on Earth, it'll be about 9.8 meters per second. But if you fly off to, for example, Jupiter, 
the gravitational acceleration due to Earth will be a lot less noticeable. Turns out that the gravitational field at very high altitudes, like at the very top of mountains, tends to be lower than the force at the surface. And this is because the further out you go from Earth, the less of a gravitational field there is. But it turns out the change is very, very small. We have here Mount Everest. The gravity at the top of Mount Everest is about 9.7 meters per second squared instead of the 9.8 we're used to. So it's very, very difficult to measure that, uh, that tiny little change. So what about if we go out in space? Surely the astronauts in the space shuttle are weightless, right? Well, no. The space shuttle has a weight that's about 90% of its surface weight. It turns out to be about 8.7 meters per second squared. And this is, you know, in space now. It turns out that the space shuttle orbits so close to Earth that it still has a very strong force attracting it toward the ground. So why doesn't it fall down? Well, we'll get onto that in a little bit. Uh, for now, that's the end of the theory. So we've gone over what gravitational force is and what the Earth's gravitational field looks like. Let's go on to some questions. Question 1. Aristotle's ideas of motion were replaced by those of Galileo. What did Aristotle believe about falling objects? Uh, so we have a few options here. Heavy objects call, fall faster because they have more mass. They fall slower because they have more air resistance. They fall at the same rate because acceleration is constant. Or they fall at the same rate because there's an invisible force pushing them back up as they're trying to fall down. So the answer here uh, is almost an intuitive answer. We know that uh, it can't be C because that was Galileo's idea. But if we think about how heavy objects land harder than lighter objects, it makes us think that they must be falling faster. This is not what's happening, but it's what Aristotle believed. So A is the correct answer. Question 2. Why don't other planets like Venus fall toward the Earth? We have a few options here. Space objects aren't affected by gravity. Other planets are too large to be affected by gravitational force. The Earth's gravitational field is too weak to affect it, or the acceleration due to the Earth is cancelled out by acceleration due to other planets. So let's go through our options. A says that objects in space are not affected by gravity. But if you look back at the slide, you notice that the space shuttle, which is in space, is still being affected by gravity, quite strongly in fact. Uh, the other thing is that planets orbit the Sun due to gravity, so there must be gravitational force acting there. It's not A. B says that the other planets are too large to be affected by gravitational force, but we know that the force on an object due to gravity is proportional to its mass. So that means that for very, very heavy objects like a planet, the gravitational force would be stronger, right? So it, it's not B. D says that the acceleration due to the Earth is cancelled out by acceleration due to other planets. Now technically you could use this as an answer and say that it's all, all in some very delicate balancing act. But if you look at the actual motion of the planets, this isn't the case. They just sort of go around the sun very smoothly and uniformly. They don't have to pull out this d complicated, delicate balancing act to make things not attract each other. So our last option is C. The Earth's gravitational field is very weak far away from the Earth. And this is, in fact, the correct answer. So it turns out the further away you get from Earth, the weaker the effect of its gravitational field are. When you get to a distance uh, as far away as, say, Venus, then the gravitational field is so weak that it has practically no effect on the motion of Venus. And of course, Venus is the closest planet to, our, uh, to ours, so uh, pl other planets that are even further away would have even less of an effect. Question 3. What is the gravitational acceleration on an apple with a mass of 140 grams? Now, what's the, uh, what's the formula for gravitational acceleration? Well, you don't really have one. You have a constant, remember? 9.81 meters per second squared. All objects, regardless of their mass, will accelerate at the same rate, near the surface of the Earth anyway. So part B will be using this bit of information that we have. Find the gravitational force on the apple. So we know that F equals ma, right? Uh, we have the A and we have the M 
so we should be able to calculate the F causing the A. We can do that just by multiplying the mass by the acceleration, which will give us an answer of 1.37 newtons, which means that the apple has a weight of 1.37 newtons, or it's being pushed toward the center of the Earth with a force of 1.37 newtons. Question 4. A constant force produces less acceleration for a heavy object than for a light one. But heavy objects do not fall any slower than light objects. Explain why. See, the idea is, if the force of gravity is constant for all objects, that means that light objects will fall faster. Because uh, if a constant force pushes a light object, it'll accelerate more quickly. But of course, there's an error in that way of thinking, isn't there? The gravitational force on heavy objects and light objects is not the same. The acceleration is the same because the forces that produce that acceleration are different. It means that regardless of the object's mass, its acceleration due to gravity will be the same. Heavy objects will experience a greater force. Light objects will experience a lesser force. So they'll accelerate at exactly the same rate. Question 5, the last question of this section. Is the acceleration due to gravity exactly the same everywhere on Earth? Justify your answer. So we have two options here. We can say yes or we can say no. The correct answer is that no. The acceleration due to gravity ever on Earth is not quite constant. So what would the reason for this be? Well, as we know, the gravitational field spreads out as we get further away from the center of the Earth, right? It's what the ball with the lines coming into it was. So it gets weaker at points that are further away from the Earth's center. So what happens if we climb a very, very tall mountain? Or what happens if we're at the equator, which bulges slightly compared to a sphere? Well, it means that if we're at the Earth's equator, which is further away from its center than its poles, only by a little bit, it means that we'll get less acceleration due to gravity because we'll be further away and in a weaker part of the Earth's gravitational field. Well, that's the end of the questions. So in this section, we've gone over the Earth's gravi gravitational field, its strength, its shape, and its uniformity. In the next section, we'll be looking at a bit more detail on how weight works and how it affects different objects. Mm -hmm.